All right, so we're getting started designing the LED lampshade. I have the LED USB mount V2 open. This is the provided file. And right off the bat, I'd like to go ahead and save a copy of this file. Uh, so just so we don't mess up the original, so we can always go back if we need to. I'll just choose File, Save As, and uh, I'll give it my own name. Uh, I've done this once before, but this will be a little different. I'll just call it example lampshade and I'll go ahead and put a v2 on there for myself. So doing the save as, um, save the copy and then you're working on that copy. You can see the name indicated right up top. So let's go ahead and get started and add a little shape to this for ourselves. Um, by the way, this video is just a guideline example. It's one of many ways uh, to create a lamp. So do uh, feel free to use your own creativity and go your own way, go wild with it. Um, chances are you can come up with a much better design than you'll see in this video. But just to show you how easy it can be, we'll start with a sketch right on top. I'll go ahead and project that geometry. Some of you may have some sketch settings that do a little bit of that for you. I recommend turning those off. File Options Sketch I like to turn off auto project edges during curve creation. Uh, I also leave off auto project edges for sketch creation and edit. I leave those checkboxes off in the application settings so that I can go ahead and project the edges I choose. So I'll just bring all these in and uh, I'd like my shade to have sort of an oval uh, slot design. So I'm going to use the uh, the overall, uh, let's see, maybe the center to center slot tool here. And I think I'll just position it sort of arbitrarily um, out of place, almost deliberately. And I'll show you why I do that. I'd like to use some sketch constraints to actually bring that back into place. So I just grabbed a horizontal up there and we'll uh, go horizontal. Oh, you know what? In this case, the uh, plane we're sketching on is rotated. So if you look at the little preview dashed line, we actually need a vertical in this case, even though it's currently oriented horizontally on our screen. So we'll go ahead and snap that into position so everything's nice and lined up. Then no matter how wide that feature is, it's still centered about our existing part. And I'll bring that back some. Uh, let's see, so that's the front of our light and that'll be the back of our lamp shade. Oh, something like that. Maybe maybe I'll narrow it up just a, just a little bit. Keep it small. Oh, and it looks like that one actually snapped in place, which wasn't what I was intending, but I think it'll work out for the time being. So I'll go ahead and extrude this profile uh, back downward on my lamp. And uh, about an inch looks like a reasonable distance. We can always come back and change that later. So I'll say OK. Now this is sort of a, a blocky shape, and if, if that's what you're going for, that's fine, but uh, we can put quite a lot more work into it and give it a good bit more style. So I think on my design, I'd like to have a pretty hefty fillet around this top edge. Let's try something like uh, maybe 0.25, and let's see how that looks. Not bad, I might take that up just a little bit. 0.35, I like it. Now as I look at this from the side, it still has that sort of flat, blocky appearance, and I'd like to give it just a little more style. So I'm going to come back over here in my browser to my origin planes, and I can see the YZ, and unfortunately it's not quite cutting the model in half. Um, so I think I'm going to need to put in my own work plane to sketch on. Um, if I want something down the middle, or this is flat, uh, so I probably would do all right just sketching right on this side. Let's go ahead and try that. I'll sketch on this flat side, and my plane is oriented a little strangely, so we'll bring it back. And I need to get some edges to start sketching on, so I'll just project that rectangle off the side of the part. And I think what I'd like to do is some sort of a uh, some sort of curve or, or arc to the bottom of my design, something that looks kind of like that. Um, so I might actually just draw a line of my own coming out a little bit further. 
And I don't know exactly how long that should be yet, um, but I sort of know the look I'm going for, and we see it here in green. And I think I'd like to try an arc, just uh, from then to that line to the other end here, and, and bringing it up like so. And I'm not sure if that's quite the, the shape I was going for, now that I look at it. Well, let's give it a try and see how it turns out. So if I take that section and then extrude um, just that section back through the whole thing, let's see what we get. That's not too bad. I could certainly add some other style to it. I might be able to do the same thing this way. I'm kind of curious what would happen if I sketched an arc this way on the object. Would that give me a little bit more of a domed shade? Just something pretty slight. Uh, let's go investigate that real quick. So we want to sketch on a plane that's actually parallel to the XY in this instance. So I'm going to say let's make a plane that is tangent to a surface and parallel to a plane. plane. So it'll be tangent to this surface and parallel to the XY plane. That looks pretty good. So let's try sketching on it, and we'll just pick it from the edge. And I might want to actually project that edge, and that does capture everything. And then what if I try doing an arc of my own from here to here? And just just slight. And uh, really, we want to have fully defined sketches, so we could throw a, a dimension on there of something that's close to where we freehanded it. That way there's no ambiguity um, and the sketch is locked down and, and it won't uh, go astray by a slip of the mouse click. So let's see if we can extrude that now. Oh, that is an interesting looking profile coming out in the positive, sort of a futuristic design. But let's take it all the way back um, in the negative. Let's see, I think we are going that way. I think that's the correct direction. It's counterintuitive to how I'd think these arrows should be. Um, but it looks like that has done the job for us. And let's say OK to that. So very subtle, very slight. But I have curved the bottom of this. And I could come back and take that just a bit more. I can edit that sketch. I can possibly delete that 7 inch radius dimension and just freehand that up a bit more and come back and redimension it to something closer to what I'm looking for and the feature updates and that's a pretty interesting design um, now that I see it I don't know if I'm a fan of keeping the the end open like that maybe maybe it was best to leave it down but uh, let's let's see what that would look like we'll turn the plane off Oops, and we'll suppress the extrusion for a minute. I feel like there's just too much mass down in this end, but when I bring it back, I feel like I'm going to be looking right at the uh, LED board. So I might need a little more work on the style, but we'll go ahead with this for now. Okay, so the next feature we need is to actually attach this shade to the structure of our lamp. So I need another mounting point, some sort of feature coming out the back of this lamp, something, something like so, with a hole that goes through it. So let's see how we might be able to make that happen. I do like this domed portion on the top, so I think I'd like to keep that. So what I'm thinking is I might just add to the bottom section here, and the way I might do it is a plane right at this level to sketch on. So let's see if we can make that happen. If I take a measurement from the top of my shade down to here, I've got 0.35. So if I make a plane that is offset from another plane, I'll say offset from here by a distance of minus, in this case, 0.35. I can barely see it peeking out there, and in fact I see it on the inside. 
but I think that gets it where I want to start my extrusion in the way that I'd like to. So let's go ahead and sketch on that plane. And I need to project some things here. And in fact, I may jump into wireframe mode to more easily see where I'm sketching. That was under the view menu under visual style. And a lot of design work is just orbiting the model around, looking at it from every which way, deciding what you want to do. So let's perhaps project this edge and see if that can help us in some way. And what if I were to anchor a rectangle on that curve? And let's suppose I put this a bit out of place here. I'd like to get this corner attached to that curve. So what we need to do is use a coincident constraint. Coincident means two pieces of geometry at the same place. So I can make this point coincident to this curve. And now I think due to geometry, I think it's also uh, aligned with the center line of our lamp just by definition of how that works. So this is looking like what I'm going for. I'd like to put a width to it of 1.3. Now this is a very particular number. Um, where it came from, in fact, we're going to go slightly larger. We're going to go 1.32 specifically. So where it came from is the base of our uh, lamp has that milled part that is 1.2 wide. Uh, then on the sides of that we have our sheet metal arms, each of which are 0 0.06. So we can do a little bit of math here. We have 1.2 plus 0 0.06 plus another 0 0.06 for the next arm. So that's going to equal to be 1.32. So we'll go ahead and say OK to that. And that looks pretty good. Now at this point, we need to determine some sort of length for our mounting portion of the lamp. And I might start at an inch or so and see how that turns out. I think we're ready to extrude this shape back this way. And I'm wondering what I can do with some of these options rather than distance, if I can actually get it down to another surface. Oh, that is interesting. That followed that same curve, and I like it. Um, so let's go back to shaded mode for a moment, just to see what's going on there. So rather than extruding by distance like this, we can say extrude to and pick the surface it should extrude to, and it follows that curve. Kind of neat, I like it. Um, I might need to make some adjustments, but let's say OK to that for now. So I have this sort of mounting tab on the back of my lamp head or lamp shade, and it's 1.32 across. I need a hole in it now, like this, to actually go between my structure, and what I'm worried about is that it's getting pretty thin in this part right here. So what can we do design-wise to thicken this up a bit um, in the area that it mounts? It makes me wonder if it was a good idea to follow that curve or not. Um, perhaps we can draw our own style right onto the side of this. So if I sketch here, what if I were to, say, project that side face so I have some edges to line things up against, and put a circle, not snap to anything, just deliberately out of place. And then what if I were to use a horizontal constraint to align the center of that circle to the midpoint of this line? That looks pretty good. Let's put a size on that circle of, oh, maybe about half an inch, and see how that looks looks pretty good so far. 
if we were to extrude this all the way back again to this side now and we're doing that as a positive it'll add that sort of bumper bubble to the shape and we'll say OK. Now that's looking pretty good to go put a hole through and put a bolt through but we can make it even stronger if we put in some modest fillets at these interfaces. Parts are stronger with fillets. I'm wondering if it will get this one here. Oh look at that. Inventor just blended that right in quite nicely. And while we're at it, I'm wondering if we can fill at these edges as well. Sometimes it's tough to do too many fillets in one area. Oh, that's a little bizarre. And, and control click can deselect. Inventor can get a little, little confused about intersecting fillets and how they should blend. Like this has some sort of issue where it won't go if I tried but once I pick that one it looks like they're all sort of blending in and I'm really curious if I can get these bottom ones as well. That is super cool. I'm so interested in seeing how this turns out. It's just a nice little finishing touch to the model. So we picked a bunch of them and you orbit around a bit and make sure you didn't miss any. Okay let's see what happens if we get these couple as well that's looking pretty great and let's go ahead and apply that and close that so we've taken that fairly blocky shape and we've made it um, pretty rounded and smoothed now I'd like to still get that hole in here for the pivoting uh, action of our lampshade but I don't have a good circular reference anymore since I put those fillets in. So let's go ahead and move our end of part marker right up above the fillets so when we start making a new feature it's almost like those fillets never happened. So let's, and, and that was just a click and a drag on that end of part marker. It, it takes you back in time somewhat. And let's go ahead and sketch right on that flat face. Let's project out all that geometry and we've got the center point from the arc and let's put a circle on it, snap to the center, at a dimension of 0.27. Um, I feel like this is an extra 20 thousandths allowance for our quarter inch bolt that will go through it. So we are looking for a clearance fit on this. Um, with the tolerance in 3D printing, I think 0.27 is going to give us a close clearance fit on that quarter inch bolt. So we'll say OK. And we'll extrude cut it through all. Now that we've got it, uh, we can move our end of part marker right back down to the bottom. Our fillets come right back. And I see that the flat area here uh, is very minimal. And this is going to have a bit of compression on it as we uh, assemble our lamp. And I would like a little more flat area to be sort of uh, load bearing and provide some friction to keep our lamp head from tilting there. Um, if we wanted to get really fancy we could maybe even design in some sort of uh, indexable uh, ratchet teeth or, or something of the sort uh, so that the lamp doesn't slip down but um, smooth is fine we will rely on friction but I do want a little more surface area so I'm going to edit that fillet and say maybe half the thickness and let's see what we get. So this just goes to show that you don't always get the design right on the first try, nor do you have to. Um, it takes a little bit of iteration sometimes, trial and error, seeing, seeing how it looks and going from there. I'm curious if I can get one more fillet in there and what that might look like. Let's try it. That might be a kind of a strange blend, but let's see how it turns out. And it looks like I may have lost some of the other fillets in doing that. So I'm going to cancel that. Let's see if it'll take as a separate fillet feature, maybe even at a little bit bigger fillet. Okay, now it's picking up that entire edge. Kind of weird looking, but actually not bad looking. And it does add to the strength of the part. What if we went 0.1 on that? I'm kind of liking that. 
Let's try it. I think that's pretty great, and I'll go ahead with it. So I've got this nice pivot tab right off the back of my lamp to where the sheet metal arms can ultimately attach, and I can sketch just a, a quick rough freehand here of, of what that may look like. So you may have the sheet metal arms. Oh, let's take this further to the top of the screen. Oop, there it is. So you may have the sheet metal arm um, pivoting right at this point, and it, it itself might be uh, a little larger, and it might have its own uh, pivot point down here someplace, and it might be that wide. And when we put those, those sheet metal arms in, it may look something like this, and then we might have a second one coming down to our base that contains our mill part. And I think we're just about out of frame here, but something of the sort in, in quick little little Crayola CAD. And our base uh, will sit right there to support this uh, apparatus. So it, it looks pretty great and I'm excited to move on to the next stage of the project. Just to wrap up, keep in mind this is only one of many great designs I'm sure you'll come up with on your own. Um, do not feel the need to make your lamp look like this or feel constrained by these modeling techniques. Um, feel free to go your own way with your design. Now, as I was about to wrap up the video here, I realized we do have one more issue uh, we need to solve in this lamp before we can go print this part. And that is, where does the USB cord go? If we take a look here, uh, the back end of the USB cable backs up against this area of solid material, which is going to be a bit of an issue. Uh, there's no way to get it out. So we need to clearance a little more back in this zone here for that cable to get out. So let's go ahead and la I'd land a sketch on there, but this surface is not flat. So I think I'm going to use that technique again of a plane. Um, I want it offset from a plane, but there might be another way to do it. We can say, ooh, this is going to be tricky. Uh, what if we put our plane, I'm kind of curious, is this a flat surface? I'm not sure if that's flat anymore. Nope, it certainly isn't. Um, so we may need to just do a plane offset from a plane. And I'll start here and offset it by, if I go by 0.5, that's more than enough. What if I go by 0.25? I wanted it sort of perfectly there, but that looks like I'm in the ballpark of where I need to be to sketch up here and, and get everything I need to get. So I'll just say OK to that, and we'll sketch up on it. And let me project, oh, let's say we took that edge, and you can see it projected up there as that sort of purple line. And I might also want to project these edges to give me a basis for where my cable clearance needs to be. And I'm thinking I might be able to do this as a pretty narrow uh, slot. And I'd like to draw that rectangle a bit out of place and use a coincident constraint to make sure I get it right where I want it. And let's give a length to it from here to here. I'd like to push that back um, a good ways if I can. Maybe 0.75. And I'm sitting here looking at the the physical bend radius of a USB cable. And it looks like you need, at a bare minimum, uh, a half inch to make that cable bend down to a 90 degree to go to the lower portions of your lamp. And I'm seeing that 0.75 here is, is getting up into the zone where that bolt goes through. I might try 0.6, which looks like I'm staying out of it. So we'll take that rectangle and extrude, cut it back. And 
I don't know that I can take it to this surface. Ooh, that may have worked. Um, we may need to go with a distance, but that looks okay for now. Let's try it. Looks like we're breaking through here just a bit, which I don't like. You can barely see those little those little missing places there right back in our fillet. So we could either increase the size of this fillet uh, or we could decrease the length of our slot. And uh, strangely enough, it did not extrude in the way that I thought it would. Uh, we were left with a pin in this uh, area, which is not the desired result. So we may need to do a little work to that extrusion by editing that feature. Um, let's see if this option might do it. Nope, doesn't look like it. Uh, we may have to go by distance. That might be a better way for us to go. And what if I took it down to... Oh, let's take a guess here. We could do some measurements, but that's getting us close. That looks even closer. Uh, we probably want it below that curve so that the cable can, can lie in there gently. So something of that sort. And I now have a bigger, bigger hole back here. So we definitely want to do something about that. I'm going to say OK to the extrusion. And I'm going to edit the sketch where that rectangle was made and bring that back maybe to 0.5 and finish it up. And I'm hoping that that's enough space for our cable to make the bend around where it'll be uh, sort of laying in there and then, and then bend around and come out this way. Alternatively, we could make the whole part a little bit longer if we had to. I am a little worried about this particular edge and how close it might be to the outside surface here where we saw it breaking through before. So I'd like to put my model into wireframe, and that'll give me a better look at how close that edge is. And that does look pretty thin right in there. So I think I might um, put a little fillet in this corner as well. So let's go ahead back to shaded and get a 3D fillet in that corner. And something like that is fine. Let's see if we can take it a little bigger as the cable is making its way down. Let me split the difference there. And I think that looks about right. Um, when you guys are designing your own models, you might not have all the numbers. You might not know what numbers to enter. Um, but my advice is enter the numbers you know. And uh, for the ones you don't know, make something up that's a good round even number that that looks close to the result you're going for. Um, you don't want to freehand everything. You do want to lock it in with some numbers. Um, but in terms of what those numbers are, there's not a whole lot of them that are critical. Uh, the only real critical number here is the width of this, this mounting feature at a distance of 1.32 inch. Um, so I think for my example, that will conclude my modeling of the lampshade. I'm really looking forward to seeing what you come up with that goes well above and beyond the simple design I've done here. And finally, I'd like to thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.